Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Justin Blackstead and this is Single Track Rambler. Uh, this channel is here to provide you with tools, tips, and techniques for trail maintenance. Today we're going to be talking about trail ma maintenance digging tools. Uh, this is not about trail construction tools, but specific to maintenance. So there's days when you're heading out, you're going to take your chainsaw, one digging tool, work your way through a trail, fix what you can. You might come back later with some different tools to do some more heavier trail construction. Uh, but yep, this is just maintenance. Today we're going to be talking about four of my favorite tools, and they're all from one brand, and that's Rogho. I've had awesome luck with them the last six years. Great company, great quality. They use recycled tractor discs, which I think is really cool. They have quality handles, and handle replacement's pretty easy. You end up breaking handles, it's the name of the game. So anyways, let's uh, go ahead and get into some of these tools. Um, and one caveat, if you're going to go out and do trail work, you need to gain some skills, some insight to the techniques that we use out there. Uh, not everyone should just go out and start digging willy-nilly without knowing what they're doing. So check in with your club, your land manager, your landowner, find a mentor, whatever you need to do. But just make sure you have some knowledge, skills, and ability before we go out there and just start digging. And uh, let's start talking about these really rad tools. All right, let's talk about the Pulaski really quick. Let's stir up a little controversy. Uh, I'm going to start out by saying I don't like carrying these anymore. Spent the first seven years of my career with one of these on my bike or in my hands every single day. And really what you're getting is a three inch hoe, three and a quarter maybe, that you're kind of out there with a teaspoon trying to move dirt with when you're trying to do actual heavy uh, digging. And you got an ax on one side, you don't need an ax. You have a chainsaw with you if you're doing motorized trail work. So you've got someone that's running saw, you're trying to dig and keep up with them. Where a Pulaski, classic Pulaski like this is really convenient is on a wilderness trail crew. Someone can be working ahead, clearing, branches off trees so that the way the crosscut crew is more efficient they can also be chopping out smaller diameter logs out of the trail and they still have something they can dig with to clear some drains so overall at 5.4 pounds three inch three inches three inches on the business end it's really not something that i find to be that useful anymore like i said i know people are enamored with this you have the story of Pulaski, Ed Pulaski, you got the cave, you got the 1910 fire. It's pretty cool. It's a cool story to fall in love with. The thing looks rad, but it's just not practical for what I am trying to do in the field these days. All right, here we've got the Rogue Ho 55 HX weighing in at 5.1 pounds. It is lighter than a traditional Pulaski, but you're going from three and a quarter inches of dig where it matters to 5.5 inches of digging power. So you're gonna move way more earth, way more efficiently with this tool. Uh, you get to keep a ax on the front, but I don't like the way that they shape the ax head on this. I've actually had a boss in the past that cut this off right here, flipped it over. Uh, this rise makes more sense to be down here for me. Uh, I end up missing quite a bit with this tool when I'm trying to swing it, but I don't carry this all the time. A lot of crew members that wanna keep that traditional plasticky look when they're young, they go with this when they're grabbing from our cash. But I think throughout the season, most of them switch to some of the other options we're going to go through. And there's really good reasons why I would trade an axe head for some of the other tools we're going to go over. And this, again, is for a non-wilderness setting. If I was a wilderness trail crew member, that axe head is a lot more valuable because I don't have a chainsaw with me that's going to rip through trees. I'm not... I'm going to need to help my crosscut crew out by going out and clearing the branches and cutting the smaller trees that I can. So anyways, non-wilderness setting. This is better than a traditional Pulaski, but I think there's better options on the market. But if you want to keep that look, go up for it. Run this guy. Okay, now we got the Rogue Ho 55H. So this is basically the beast, the 55HX without an ax head on it. Same 5.5 inches of dig here. It's weighing in at 4.6 pounds, so you drop a little weight by getting rid of that ax, but what you gain is a really smooth digging surface, and this flat end here, while some of you think, well, they just got rid of the ax head, I use this all the time. I use it to set my wedges. So as you progress as a sawyer, I think most people start out by cutting and working through and reading binds, which is all good, but I feel like I can increase my efficiency by using my wedges at the right time. Because if I get my saw stuck, I gotta call someone else to come help cut me out or spend a bunch of time chopping out my saw 
So I would rather set a wedge when I know there's gonna be a bind with this, set it deep, knock it in there, and know that I'm gonna be good through the rest of my cut because that 10 seconds could save me 10 minutes. So on the 55H, when we're running saw crews, I'll usually have one person cutting, the other person swamping. They'll have this 55H, so that way they can set wedges for the Sawyer if they need them, depending on the tree. So this is an excellent tool. You're gonna move a lot of dirt really quick. Uh, even on big trail building days, this is kind of my go-to if I'm setting back slope, because I feel like I can. it's got a good tool weight, swings well, feels good. I can be on the end of this all day and feel confident with it. 55H. All right, now we got the Rogue Host 70HR weighing in at 5.7 pounds, slightly heavier than a traditional Pulaski, but you are gaining seven inches. We got seven inches of digging area here. So you can pull a lot of dirt with this tool. You also have a rake end, so if you need to do some scrape, rough up some condensed soil, it's there for you. I take this tool when I know there's gonna be a ton of drains down. As you get to know your working area, being doing the same trails year in and year out, you're gonna know that some trails have more drain and require more work than others. So if I know that's the case, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of weight to take this with me so I know I got the power to get the job done. Again, this is the Roco 70HR, made out of an old tractor disc, high quality, holds a good edge and has a beautiful handle on it. And oh, on all these rogue hoes, there's one pin here that goes through, handle sinks in. Usually gotta heat the handle to get it out, re-glue the handle, stick it in, peen this on, and you're done. It's a pretty simple process to replace these handles and they last multiple seasons for our crew, working with them 40 hours a week. All right, well, let's look at our last one here. All right, now we got the Rogue Hose 70 AR, also known as the Travis Hoe. This is coming in at 4.5 pounds for me. It's got a rake, it's got a small pick, it's got a flat scrape, and it's got a seven inch digging surface across the front here. This thing is awesome. I think I get a lot of crew members from different crews that have a ton of experience, and they come in and they kind of give this a sideways look, and then by the end of the season, we're fighting over who gets to take it. It can do anything you need it to. It'll work hard for you. Like I said, it's a recycled tractor disc. It's got good welds. They hold up, the handles are strong. Every Rogue Ho product uh, does really well for us, but this one has withstood the test of time. I think this one's going on six years old. It's probably ready to get replaced. I'm gonna cut the handle down, use this on my moto, probably buy a couple new ones for the crew this year. But like I said, this is the, crew, the tool that we end up fighting over. If you're looking for one thing to do at all, this might be a good option, whether you're building new tread, doing maintenance, doing QC on existing tread, which is called quality control. All those things this tool is gonna to do for you. So for a one, one tool to do it all, this is what I would pick. It's my favorite. All right, well that's a quick look at my four favorite tools for doing trail maintenance. Hope you gained some knowledge out of this and maybe some insight on where you're gonna go with your trail tool purchase for next season. Again, I'm just gonna reiterate, if you're gonna go out and do tread work, please have the knowledge, skills, ability, and probably the permission from the land owner or land manager to do so. The best way you're gonna gain those is by finding a mentor, attending volunteer events, and working with your land manager to make sure that you have the skills so you're not going out and doing permanent trail damage when you think you're doing good. The worst thing we can do is go out and sanitize technical trail features, thinking that we're making the trail more accessible to others, because all we're gonna do is increase the speed of a trail and decrease the technicality, which is a huge bummer for everybody. All right, that's what I'm gonna say about that. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if there's anything that you want me to talk about that I haven't yet, let me know in the comments, and if I don't know about it, I will find someone in the trail industry to interview, because we're all buddies, it's a small thing. Uh, again, thanks for all your time, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.